He is risen. He is risen indeed. We welcome you this Easter morning. My name is Bill Yuri. This is my wife, Diane, and we serve at National Headquarters. We want to join you, all Salvationists in this country and beyond, and all Christians around the world as we rejoice in our risen Lord this Easter morning. We greet you in his wonderful, powerful name, and we're asking him to come in the middle of incredibly difficult times to show us again his delivering and redemptive power. We greet you in his risen name. What a glorious privilege we have to be able to gather to worship our powerful, risen, living Lord this morning. We are at a physical distance from one another, but the greater reality is that because Jesus is risen and we are in him, all of you, Bill and me, we are in him. Therefore, in truth, we are in intimate fellowship with one another because we are his living body here on the earth as the church. And so I'm with you, even though we're separated. I want to focus on that greater reality today. And I also think a lot these days about how with Jesus, there is no social distancing. He is not keeping himself safe. He's our rescuer. And he comes to us. He comes to you right now wherever you are. And he's not wearing any gloves and he is not wearing a mask because he wants to breathe the breath of his very life into your life right where you are today. Jesus is alive and he is with you and he loves you. We've been thinking a lot about the scriptural passages that would be the best to read this morning. And the one the Holy Spirit's led us to is in 1 Corinthians 15. You remember that this is where the church begins to reflect upon the Gospels and the narratives, the stories about Jesus actually walking out of that tomb on Easter morning. So Paul, as he's speaking to the Corinthian church, says these things that all of us need to hear and apply to our lives, even today. Tell me this, he says, since we preach Christ, that Christ rose from the dead, why are some of you saying there will be no resurrection from the dead? For if there is no resurrection from the dead, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, then all our preaching is useless, and our faith is useless. And we apostles would all be lying about God, for we have said that God raised Christ from the dead. But that can't be true if there's no resurrection from the dead. And if there's no resurrection from the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless and you are still guilty of your sins. In that case, all who have died believing in Christ are lost. And if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be pitied than anyone in the world. Now listen to what Paul says now. But in fact, Christ has been risen from the dead, raised from the dead. He is the first of a great harvest of all who have died. So you see, just as death came into the world through a man, now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man. Just as everyone dies because they all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Jesus Christ will be given new life. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Glorious Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for the beauty of this morning. In this dark time around the planet, we lift our faces to you, the light of the world, the living Savior. You are our life. You are our victory over all despair, over fear, over anxiety, over our sin, over death, over disease. You are the victor. We love you this morning. We thank you for your strong arm that you reach into our lives, that you take hold of us, you grasp us, and you bring us into your very life today as our living one. And so, Jesus, we come to you with rejoicing in our hearts, and we lift our souls to you, and we ask for you to pour in hope and joy and peace and we ask, Jesus, that you would help us to sense your living presence 
with us today and we worship you. We surrender to you. We give you our lives, our only life, our redeemer and the lover of our souls. In your precious name we pray. Amen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. Jesus has risen indeed. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He has risen, risen indeed. He is risen indeed. He is risen, risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. Jesus Christ has risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. He has risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. Good morning. As you know, as we go through this pandemic, the economy is going to be affected and the church is going to be affected. But we also want to remind you that there are opportunities to give. You can always mail your check into the core and we'll provide that address on the screen. But you can also click the give button that's on the online church platform. If you're watching on the stream right now, 
you can click that give button and that tithe will go directly to the core. And we just want to make sure that you know that these opportunities are there and that you continue to be faithful in the giving of your tithes and your offering because God is going to do, continue to do great things through the Salvation Army and through this core, even as we reach out to each other online and just lift each other up in prayer. God is going to do great things, and we're going to do great things in this community both now and after this virus is over. So please continue to give. Please remember God in your giving and make sure that you're reaching out to those who are affected by this virus. Praise a hallelujah In the presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah Yeah.
Happy Easter, my brothers and sisters. Today's reading will be from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 31. That's chapter 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 31. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the world, of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent. I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For well, since in the wisdom of, the, of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him. God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believed. Jews demand signs, Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumble block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But the power of God and the wisdom of God, for the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God, that is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boasts in the Lord. This is the reading of the Lord. Good morning. Happy Easter. As I told you before in a previous sermon, much earlier before all of this stuff happened with coronavirus, this is the Super Bowl of Christianity. So what's so great about it? I interviewed a few of the experts in my house to see what their answer was about what Easter is all about. You guys still send look right, the camera, smile, and talk. I'm Gavin and I'm 13. Okay, just look at the camera. Don't look I'm at the camera. Gavin and I'm 13. I'm Colin Jones and I am 10 years old. Um, so, so Jesus was like, he, he was a good person. But the other people didn't think he was a good person, so they had, so they like kind of, well, to, for God, they they kind of like made him, then killed him, but but only so that um, only so that the people could could be like saved and have a good um, life and no more sins and they're forgived, and and so that they are. And then Jesus on Easter, he uh he came back and he he rose from the dead because he wasn't in the tomb anymore. So then they found Jesus, and then but then later on Jesus went to heaven, but he didn't die. Most people think he did die, and guess what? Wake up the next day. See what they each bunny bring. No, no, no. What do what we celebrate? Because forgive, uh, forgive us sons. Sins. 
do that this year because we're not allowed to because of the thing but um yeah that's what we do that's what we do uh eggs eggs yes we eat eggs potato potatoes oh yeah well the candy potato so us family, we take a bunch of sugar and a bunch of peanut butter and we put it together and we make it so it looks like, and we put some potato with it. We should try it, it tastes really good. <laughs> <laughs> and we make it. <laughs> but it's very sweet, so, so if you can't have sweet stuff, I wouldn't recommend it, but it's, it's very good. No, it's so good. We take pictures and we wear like special clothes and we wear pictures. Right, Kevin? Mm -hmm. Yes, we take um we go out with our uh clothes, like our special <coughs> clothes like mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. But we buy special clothes <coughs> just for Easter. And then we take picture, <coughs> like and like cool. Yeah, we do the Easter egg hunt. I forgot about all about that. At our old church, guess what we did? We, we can't, we, I can't talk to you, you can't talk to me. So what we did was, um, we had a playground at our old church and we did a bunch of eggs with like candies inside, but there were like three golden eggs and um, they had a note on them. And whoever found the golden eggs, they got a special prize. But my friend Matthew, he was so smart because, like, he knew that every year someone always hid the golden egg under the slide. So whenever it started, he'd go all the way to the slide, and he like got a golden egg. And it was pretty crazy. behind this. There's a bunny, right? If you take pink and subtract the number of noses the Easter bunny has, it's three. And there are three crosses in Jesus where he died. So there's a bunny. But also, I think bunny because like Jesus, like, um, does it have any? Maybe just like because People like bunnies, and they only and they like stealing. Wait, what does a bunny give eggs? Maybe we need to do a little bit of a better job on training <laughs> these kids what Easter is really all about. Um, they talked a lot about Jesus, though, so that's positive. Um, in my house growing up, we had a lot of traditions, and Easter was one of those traditions where we always got new dresses. Um, we had the hats and the gloves and the baskets and the little flurry, furry, not furry, frilly socks. You know what I'm talking about? That you get, you will wear them with your little Mary Janes as a little girl. And uh, my dad always bought us a Easter corsage. I don't have one today, but um, this will have to do. So this is my Easter corsage today. So you'll have to excuse that for a bit. 
So why do we celebrate and look forward to this day? Why is it such a big deal? Well, let's review for those of you who are just tuning in. We have just finished Holy Week, where we recall what Jesus and his disciples did during their last full week together. They were getting ready for the Jewish holiday of Passover, and they had come to the holy city, Jerusalem, to celebrate. The city would have been flooded with so many people. There would have been wall-to-wall -wall people, and they would have all been there to celebrate this holy holiday. We recall during this time how Jesus was given a king's welcome as he was brought into Jerusalem on a donkey, and they waved palms and shouted, Hosanna in the highest. And then he spent time with his closest friends because he knew that he would have to leave them soon. He washed their feet. He, they prayed together. They had a meal together that he told them to love one another. And he was also sold out by one of those friends and that hurt him very badly. We talk about how Jesus was falsely accused and tried by the Jewish priest and how he was turned over to the Roman government, beaten beyond anything we can imagine, sentenced to death, a horrible, painful death, and forced to carry part of his cross through the city, being spit on and jeered at by those who just days before had hailed him as Messiah, and made fun of by Roman soldiers, nailed through his hands and his feet, painfully struggling for each breath, made to look like a fool with a crown of thorns on his head and a mocking sign above him that said, this is Jesus, King of the Jews. Jesus hung there until he died. He suffocated. The Romans were very, very good at, at crucifixion. They used it control, to control the people they ruled over. They crucified people in prominent places so that others who thought about rebelling or going against them would think twice. It was very effective. If you came into the city during Passover, you saw those, maybe some empty crosses. You knew what would happen to those who disobeyed. On a lonely spot outside the, the walls of Jerusalem, a place where life ends is where Jesus ended his life. When we visited Jerusalem three years ago, we got to go to two different locations where Jesus may have been hung on the cross. One is enclosed by a church and is now inside the city walls. And one is now just above a bus stop. Both have been outside the city walls when Jesus was alive and were very lonely places to die indeed. As no one would have wanted to be associated with criminals because the attention of the Romans might have been turned to them. The one dying on the cross would have been lucky if anyone had come to mourn them. And after Jesus died, he was buried in a grave that didn't belong to him. A large stone was rolled in front of it to seal it. And two guards, Roman guards, were placed there because they wanted to be sure that no one would steal his body. The disciples were shocked. They never saw this coming which is weird because Jesus had told them many, many times that he was going to be leaving them. They just didn't get it. The priests and leaders of the Jewish people thought they had gotten rid of Jesus. They thought they had gotten rid of a troublemaker and gotten rid of him for good. They were proud of what they had done. The Romans simply thought they had squashed a rebellion and figured that they would never hear about this Jesus or his followers ever again. That would indeed have been the end of the story, except that it wasn't. That could have been the last anyone had ever heard of Jesus of Nazareth, but the cross wasn't a place of failure. It was not a place of finality. It was not a place where evil won. It is a place of victory. When Jesus was on the cross and said, it is finished, it is not a statement of defeat. It's not an I'm giving up. It was a statement of completion. He didn't say, I am finished. He was saying, I did it. I have accomplished what I came to do. The cross is a place where sinners are made clean. It is a place where the weak are made strong. The cross is a place where the sick are made well. It is a place where the hopeless find their hope. 
And it is a place where the timid are made brave. The cross is a place where the hurting are made whole. The cross is a place where the worthless are given purpose. And on the third day in that grave, Jesus told death, I am over you and walked out alive on his own accord. The stone was rolled away, the guards fainted, and the angel said, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Yes, Jesus gave his life for us and he conquered the grave because the power of the one and only son of God was his. The reason that my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it back up again. That's from John 10, 17 and 18. Jesus was totally in control the entire time. He chose to give his life. He chose to die because he loves us all and he loves you more than you can ever comprehend. But if he had stayed dead, then none of this would matter. The cross is a cross of victory because through it <laughs> was meant death. I'm sorry. Let me try that again. Just stop it right there. The cross is a cross of victory because it was meant for death and sadness, but it gives life and love. Jesus is alive. And because he lives, we have hope for future in heaven. We celebrate because our salvation in Jesus is sure. We wear new clothes, we wear flowers, and we celebrate all things new and perfect because we have been made clean and perfect by the blood of Jesus. Our hope is in him, and we celebrate that victory today. Our family is going to dress in our Easter best and sing a song together, and I pray that it blesses you. Remember to celebrate today. Remember to get up, get dressed, so that you're, I know we're stuck inside, but that's okay. We can still celebrate. We can get all dressed up and have nowhere to go. That's okay, because our future is secure, and we put our trust in Him. And as we sing, I hope that you'll praise God for His precious gift of salvation and truly feel the victory that Jesus has given us through Easter. And after this song, we will pray together. Easter. Happy Easter. <laughs>
Our Father, we thank you so much for giving your life. King Jesus, you are high and lifted up. Thank you for loving us enough to give your own life. But Lord, thank you for conquering death so that one day we can have eternal life, that we can come and have a right relationship with you. Father, I pray that today you would just dwell over us, that we would feel your presence. And Lord, that we would celebrate the victory that is ours through you. We love you so much. I pray for our congregation, Lord. I pray for health. I pray for safety. Father God, I pray for an end to the virus. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would bring us victory. We love you and we praise you today. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you all. Stay healthy. Stay safe. He is risen. He is risen. Light, beauty, wind, waves, height, depth, shape, color, dimension, speed, stillness, softness, intensity, passion, purpose, vision, movement, song, laughter, tears, words, faith, hope, love, sound. In the beginning, there was a great king with a great sound, 
a great heart and a great dream to create a family of his own who would love well and belong together. He created them to be powerful, beautiful, creative, and unique. He fashioned them to carry aspects of his own spirit, purposeful, significant, and strong, to belong. Gathered into his home, he put his breath into them. The breath of the king became the wind in their sails, and they flew. loved his family. Each piece of his creation displayed a part of his nature. Some were wild, others tame, 
Some were loud, others soft. Some were free-spirited, others intensely focused. They were all different, each one. Even though they were very diverse, they all had something in common. They were created by the sound of the king's voice, and so each carried a great dignity and a piece of his beauty. The king had a decision to make about what kind of ruler he would be. He could be harsh and make everything subject to his control. He could be apathetic and let his creation self-destruct. He could be overbearing or uninterested, half present or fully absent. But the king's heart was too good for any of those routes. He didn't want servants. He wanted friends. Friends get to choose for themselves where their loyalty lies. The king made a decision to preserve the experience of mutual love and friendship through giving his created ones a gift. The gift of freedom. Freedom was granted. The choice is yours.
The father of lies came and sowed seeds of doubt about the dignity of the created ones, causing them to question their loyalty to the king. They were left with these shadows, lies, that tempted them to cover their identity with shame and fall under the influence of darkness. You made too many mistakes. You are not enough. You should be ashamed. You are at fault. You are queer. You are afraid. You are too much. You have no purpose. You will not amount to anything. You are unloved. You are all alone. Shadows, doubts, fears, sin, separation, tangled, caught, enslaved, enslaved, enslaved.
king took off his kingly robes. He set aside his crown. He humbled himself and became a servant. He took on flesh, stepped into our world. I just want to go back. Out of heaven he came to seek and save those who were lost. He came as a baby wrapped in a cloth. Wise men, shepherds, a dark night, a star. He landed in the hands of unlikely parents with a promise, a prophecy, a word. Emmanuel, God with us. He grew in stature and wisdom, in favor with God and man. Brothers, sisters, parents, work, a craftsman, a man. In an unlikely business, in an unlikely town, this king, disguised as a servant, made a home. Then the time came, the time was ripe, the time was now, the time is now, for a savior, a father, a friend, Abba, the Messiah, light in the darkness, one light, one solitary light, exploding with color, salvation, healing, forgiveness, redemption for the whole wide world, come. This king stepped into his call. Confronting the darkness, he brought light. Faced with the hungry, he gave them food. Pursued by the sick, he delivered healing. A friend to sinners, he loved them all. The powers of darkness trembled, they shook. Strongholds collapsed at his name. The power of God was on display for real people, his people, calling them home. Zacchaeus, come down. Woman, be made well. Matthew, come, follow me. Blind Bartimaeus, receive your sight. Talitha, awake. Nathaniel, come, be reborn. Mary, you're free. Lazarus, come forth. To the orphan, he gave a home. To the lonely, he became a friend. To the weak, he defended their cause. To the outcast, he called them in. This is our King, Christ the Lord.
not hidden there's never been a moment you were forgotten you are not hopeless though you have been broken your innocence stolen I hear you whisper
The king gave his life to save his friends. But even in death, he found a victory. Death could not hold him down. The grave was too weak. The powers of darkness were defeated by the powerful love of a servant king. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside, and he saw the king was gone. The disciples went back to their homes distressed, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and one at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize who it was. Jesus said to her, Mary. When she heard him say her name, she turned around and cried out. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit.
the king returned to heaven, but he had made a way for anyone who wants to belong in his family to come home. He is still looking for new friends. This is eternal life, to know King Jesus. presence God thank you for your story thank you for the price that you paid so that we could be free thank you Jesus that you are not just history that you are alive and that you are in the room thank you for the moments God that we feel your breath come over us And Jesus, you're alive, you're alive, you're alive, you're alive, and you're here. Walking around, peering into our hearts, knowing the moments of this story that are personal to us. And we just say to you, Jesus, here's a few minutes of time, and we're here to meet with you.